Hello, how you doing? DeAndre Smith here. And this lesson is designed to show you the ins and outs on how to add and subtract integers. Now, if you're wondering what an integer is, an integer is nothing more than a positive and a negative number. So without further ado, let's go to the board. Integers are seen in everything in life. Um, we see integers in our banking accounts with positive and negative numbers. We see integers on a game show Jeopardy. We see integers on a weather channel uh, when the temperature rises or falling. So this lesson is designed to help us to master the concepts behind adding and subtracting them. Uh, we're going to do this in four individual topics. And the topics include, first, adding integers. Secondly, the additive inverse. Thirdly, subtracting integers. And then last, we're going to combine our efforts and add and subtract using decimals. If you guys can recall from the last lesson, placing numbers on a number line, um, we know that when it comes to integers, the positive numbers are written to the right of zero, and the negative numbers are written to the left of zero. So if we are adding integers, that means that we are going to have a starting position, and we are going to move either to the left or right, uh, depending on the second number. So, for example, if we have positive 3 and we're adding to a negative 4, that means our starting position is on positive 3. And since we are adding negative 4, that means we're going to move to the left um, four times. Since our final destination is negative 1, that means our answer is negative one. Let's try another one. Now in this example we're asked to take negative five and add positive seven to it. So that means our starting position is going to be on negative five. If we move seven places in the right direction we end up with positive two. Now as the numbers become larger and larger, um, drawing the numbers on a number line will become unrealistic. Um, it becomes tedious. So we can solve or, or add any... Now as the integers become larger, it may be a bit tiresome to draw number lines, especially if you're, you know, have 50 or 100 or 200. So integers can be added um, and simplify by these two rules. First, if the signs of the numbers are the same, you just add them. That means that if you have a positive and you add it to another positive, you're going to get positives. If you add a negative and you add it to another negative, you're going to get negatives. The second rule is, if the signs of the numbers are different, you're going to subtract. And the number that's the greatest, whatever sign that has, then that's going to be the sign of your answer. Now let's, let's do some examples um, applying these rules. Okay, let's look at these two examples. If we have positive 22 and we're adding it to positive 33, then our answer is going to be positive 55. Why? Because both of our signs are the same. So since we have two positive numbers, our answer is going to be positive. In the next example, I have negative 22 and I'm adding to it negative 33. So therefore our answer is going to be negative 55 because they are the same signs. I have two negatives. In this example I have negative 22 and I'm adding to it positive 33. So my answer is going to be 11. And let me tell you why. Because I have different signs, I'm going to first subtract. Once I subtract 33 from 22, I get 11. Now since I have more positives than negatives, then my answer is going to be positive. So my answer is positive 11. In the next example, we have positive 35, and we're adding to it negative 76. Now our answer is going to be negative 41. Let me show you how. Well, because our signs are different, meaning that I have positives and then I have negatives, first I'm going to subtract. So 76 minus 35, 35 is 41. So therefore, since I have more negatives than positives, my answer is going to be negative. So my final answer is negative 41. Now let's take a moment to talk about the additive inverse. Now the additive inverse 
is the number that when it's added to another number, it always gives you zero. Now the additive inverse is code name for the opposite. So let's take for example um, positive three. So if I take positive three and I add to a negative three, it's going to be zero. So therefore I can say that the additive inverse of positive three is negative three and vice versa. The additive inverse of negative three would be positive three. So below I have a few numbers and let's go through and let's, di let's discuss what the additive inverse would be of that number. So if I have negative one, remember, negative one plus positive one equals zero. So therefore the additive inverse of negative one would be positive one. With positive six, the additive inverse would be negative six. With negative 32, positive 32. With positive 100, negative 100. So when it comes to subtracting integers, subtraction in, subtracting integers is virtually the same as adding integers. It just involves one more additional step. And that additional step is to understand the rule for subtraction. So very briefly, the rule for subtraction is that subtraction is the same as adding by the additive inverse. Or subtraction is the same as adding by the opposite. So for example, if I had positive 6 minus a negative 4, that's the same thing as saying 6 plus a positive 4. And if we refer back to our addition rules, if I have a positive and I'm adding a positive to it, my answer is going to be positive. So I have positive 10 as an answer. Now suppose I have negative 6 minus 10, minus positive 10. So in subtraction, it's the same as adding by the opposite. So this problem can be changed to negative 6 plus a negative 10. So negative 6 plus negative 10 is equal to negative 16. Now let's apply those principles that we learned for addition and subtraction um, and perform the indicated operation using decimals. So in our example we have negative 35.6 plus 55.2. Now for an answer I got positive 19.6. Let me show you how. If you can recall from the addition rules, if we have a negative number and a positive number, our signs are different. So first we subtract. So if we subtract the two, we get 19.6. Now our answer is dependent upon which sign we had the most of. So since we have the most positives, um, our answer is going to be positive. So therefore our answer is 19.6. Now we're going to combine all of our efforts, all of our rules that we have learned for addition and subtraction, and we're going to apply it to examples that have decimals in them. So the example I have behind me is negative 35.6 plus a positive 55.2. Now I end up getting a positive 19.6. Let me show you how. So first, because our signs are different, we're going to subtract the two. So let's line up our decimal points. Okay, once I subtracted the two, I ended up with 19.6. Now, in our answer, we can tell if it's a positive or negative by looking at the signs of the original problem. So, negative 35.6 is less than 55.2. So, therefore, since we have more positives than negative, our final answer is going to be positive 19.6. Next example, I have a positive 35.6 and I'm subtracting from it a negative 55.2. Now my final answer ended up getting a positive 90.8. Let me show you how. So first of all, since we're subtracting, remember subtraction is the same as adding by the opposite. So let's change this problem a little bit. So 
So now we have a positive 35.6, and now we're adding it to a positive 55.2. Well, if you recall our rules for addition, if the signs are the same, we just add them. So let's add the decimals. So now that we added our decimals, we end up getting 90.8, and that's our final answer. Hello again, guys. Um, I hope that this lesson was able to help you in some way. Um, as always, if you have any additional questions or if you need any additional resources, feel free to contact me. Thank you.